Lord Louis of Brent attacks the Black Pyramid of Nagash in an attempt to retake it, a perpetual spiritual tug of war that has continued to take place for months now. Necro Sphinxes and War Sphinxes harry the ladies' armies, but eventually, through a combined force of arms and knightly charges, Lord Louis comes ahead. Lord Philippe meets the High Queen, facing dual armies, an advance she personally led to stop his march into her eastern kingdom. Mighty artillery bolts pierce Lord Philippe, but such terrible wounds would not stop him. To the east, an army sent from the High Queen Halida of the Court of Liberas attempts to take the insidious power of the Black Tower for herself. Lord Louis readies himself for battle, and in that battle, bone giants come about. And like so many tells before, many men gave their lives for the Lady's cause. Now we see how Baron Thagen may contribute to the Crusade, and Lord Philippe marches to Lamia. Lord Louis will be holding off the forces of Henry. Though they have but one city, many armies can still set forth. They have only one city, yet look at how many units they have. We're talking about chariots, more constructs. Cetra will not be easy to take down. He never truly is. The only one who's easily taken him down has been Sir John, but others have done it. Lord Philippe will be ready to attack Lamia in one more turn. Then we will move down here to conquer what's left of their lands, which is still plenty. There's plenty for me to take down. And Sir John and Baron Thagen will work together to destroy, or at least occupy, Kas Sabar. After that is done, we can focus three armies on Himri. That is the goal, that is what we will do. Now it's time to look at what we need to do over in Himri. If we could block an army, sure, that would be a good thing. Here's an ability for you, specialist, sure, take that. And we've got a lot of money to spend, like an Ash River. A few towns I'm not taxing because of public order issues. They're freshly conquered. Thankfully, there's no inherent vampiric corruption to worry about because that is anathema to the Tomb Kings. They're not about that at all. We own the Border Princes. We really own a lot, don't we? There are some Wood Elves here coming down to bother me. Morlana, if you're coming down to bother me, we'll have to have a chat. Tic Tac Toe. They're charging up, I believe, to go attack the Wood Elves. The Wood Elves declared war on me, and I believe now many factions are coming to fight Volkmar. them. Like Volkmar the Grim. I am Even Gelt. Matriarch. One of my favorite characters, Gelt. He's here, too. So I wonder how that may play out. Here's Valmir Gasser. We're just looking at all these different armies from other factions who I have really have not seen much of. Ah, Elspeth von Draken, a very powerful spellcaster. They have Halfling Rangers. Wonderful! And Grombrindle. Ah, that angry dwarf. Indeed, they are here today. Okay. We'll need some manner of guardian. As it stands, that could be Bohemond Beast Spitter. There are a few here. Virtue of the Ideal. I see. Dragon Dream. Why don't you stay here for a time? If you fight and stay... A few Grell Guardians can hold that location for all of us here. And I like that a lot. There we are. Not only that, you need archers. Really good archers. How many? Plenty. Plenty of good archers. That would be our guardian for that town up north. And now we're ready to end our turn. Baron Thagen is under attack by two armies. King Intef. And over here, King Sakam or Sacham. Standard of discipline, plus four to discipline. We'll give that to one of our units. Evidently, one of their agents hit our army as well. We do have the Blessing of the Lady to reduce some damages. That is good. It's a passive ability here. Ah. All right. Well, it's time to fight. Hopefully, we can win. Baron Thagen is not nearly as tested. None of them are. And so, our men are mustered. We're holding with Baron Thagen. And right now, our Pegasus Knights are flying into combat. It's time for them to handle a few screaming catapults. Those are going to inflict horrible wounds upon our lines. They already have. Baron Thagen is not experienced in war. Not in the same way that Sir John, Lord Philippe, or even Lord Louis of Brent is. I've really grown attached to every character here. We've grown with them. And the overall story for all of them just makes me want to bring them everywhere. I'm not even sure why. It just does. 
But here comes the Pegasus Knights now. They're moving in to take out these screaming catapults. When they take them out, we'll be a touch safer. Now it's time to go look at the main battle where our lines are being hit by stalkers and other units too. Archers are behind. We have spearmen on the front lines because they have shields. The goal is to go after Ushabti. Ushabti are awful. And they have so many Ushabti. There's a Tomb Scorpion too. Our damsel will try to use whatever magic she's able to use. She's not a high level spellcaster, but she will do what she's able to. And you can see now that we're just charging in and out. We'll be cycling charges with my Royal Pegasus Knights and my Hippogriff Knights too. Though they already wounded my army with an agent, so I'm not even fighting with the full might of my army. All the while, Baron Thagen and our Paladin will be fighting in the center of our lines. Stalkers are still hitting us very, very hard. That Tomb Scorpion is going after our Damsel, and he will not leave her alone. So now it's time for all of these archers to hit, and Miss Casting is killing her slowly. She's giving her life in order for everyone to stay alive. It's really thanks to her that I think many will survive. Even if she may not. And towards the back, those catapults are finally being destroyed. In addition to a group of Ushabti being heavily damaged. Though that may have been a bad choice. A poor choice, I should say. They take flight again, together. And they charge in once more after that. You can see them how they're all hitting our lines and everyone is dying. We're pulling this little choke point. Our damsel flees for her life because she was being attacked by a tomb scorpion. No one blames her. No one could blame her. She fought well and bravely. She's been casting powerful buffing magics upon our people. One tomb scorpion hits another group of archers. Ushabtu are pounding our units, cutting them, dismembering them. You remain now. In the middle, more Ushabti. Stalkers as well. Superfural stalkers are everywhere. And it's a wonder how any of us can survive, how any of us can stay here. Our Pegasus Knights, they fly back into the battle. I don't really need to give you a tactical overview because all that you're seeing here is appropriate to what's happening. So they charge in. Our damsel comes back. She's gravely wounded. There's little left to her. One peasant bowman runs by her, and now she's getting ready to cast a final spell. One for all of the people here. And so she gives her life for them. It's time to muster up the winds of magic and to say farewell to her. It's a powerful spell. One that will, again, give us the edge, even if it's for a period of time. She's waiting for right now. You can see that my knights are charging out. The battle's kind of moved over here to the center right. And so she dies. That last spell prolonging the lives of our men. Miscasting is quite dangerous. You see one of my men dismembered again by an Ushabti. The blood is palpable to look upon. Our archers focus upon Ushabti. And now we cycle charges. These brave Hippogriff Knights breaking them over and over. Royal Pegasus Knights, they fly with the Baron. These are fine steeds straight from Bretonia, from the mountains that neighbor Bretonia. And so archers change up their aim. Ushabti Great Bows. They're damaging, and so they hold. You see them return their shots now. And our Pegasus Knights, they take flight. Baron Thagen, it's been hard to keep track of him, largely due to the circumstances of this battle. The Grail Relic holds for a very long time. Ah, we found them. Men go flying. Men go dying. It never does end, does it? the need to charge in. There's a small mustering of their soldiers, but again, there's so many of these stone constructs that it will be nigh impossible to break them without our cycled charges. Without cycling them, we stand no chance. Here comes more horsemen. They once had arrows, now they're just charging in. And they're still sturdy. 
do not get me wrong, you see that they summoned in a group of Ushabti who now slaughter poor peasant archers who have been fighting bravely with Baron Thagen. Our damsel died. She gave her life for these people. If we lose here, it'll be in vain. If we win here, it'll be for a greater purpose in the lady. Royal Pegasus Knights, they're trying. Right now, every archer is attacking these Ushabti, hoping to inflict enough damage upon them to weaken their advances. There's bodies that litter the desert ground. But my overall theme was to try to cycle these charges as much as I can, but also leaving them in combat to help out my infantrymen. My infantrymen were completely outmatched. The grand difficulty with using Flying Knights is that they can easily be caught in a quagmire. It's hard to dislodge them whenever they're caught within a midst of, of units. It's like a sand pit. You're just falling further in and in the more you struggle. And that can be entirely frustrating. But I was able to keep them aloft. Those Ushavti killed even more peasant bowmen. Now they're charging in for another target. Our Baron and his paladin, they still fight on horseback. The battle's not yet over. There are few spearmen who remain. Look at that paladin fight. Baron Thagen. He's a mighty guy. He's a mighty guy in the desert. So the battle changes up now. They take flight. And they come down again. We have a more personable view of how the battle's going. So if we get a nice overview shot, though, you can see where all the action has been happening. All in one location. Now they have their great bows charging in. My archers are charging in to help out. We once had a few hundred men, no longer. Those royal hippogriff knights, though, their sturdiness is probably the only thing that kept us alive. Even if their kill counts are never really where you would want them to be. Their capability to just strike hard and to keep your foes busy is so vital, so very important. Now we just strike down a few more of the Ushabti. Baron Thagen came in late into the campaign. A relative novice in contrast to his brothers. So for him to fight in this war was a challenge on its own. They have fallen. We have won the battle. Only a few Ushabti remain. And they too decay. And so the battle is won. Look at them. We can lead them to rot. They may follow us, but they're not going to get much further. Two Ushabti. Oh, three. My, there's more than I thought. Now there's only two. Make it only one. And so the battle's been won. And they cheer. That damsel gave her life to bless our troops in battle. We barely won that battle. It was quite challenging. One of the more challenging battles where I thought we would lose, in fact. Now Sir John can move in and take Kostabar. But Esme gave her life. The fall of a damsel. That's a tragic tale for anyone. My god, I can tell you right now, I was sweating during that battle. I didn't know if I could win it. The catapults were rough. All the Ushabti. All the Ushabti is always a tough one because, I mean, they can just counter so much of what I have. Oh, are you losing a bit there, Wood Elves? I believe they are. I believe the Empire is marching on them, and now they're like, Hey, you know what? I don't want to fight you. I don't want them coming to me, so do what you will. You're not even really my neighbor, so <laughs> do what you will, right? Not a big deal. Oh, man. Oh, that battle. I'm still, like, getting over that. Those Pegasus Knights and Hippogriff Knights. The Hippogriff Knights are fairly tanky. What's tough is that it's sometimes tough to get them out of a quagmire, out of a pit of soldiers. So you got to be careful when you use them. But they're also fairly tanky in certain situations. It's all very tough. Longer Spears. There we go. Just in time. Everyone gets a new spear. More melee attack and weapon strength for all of my little infantrymen, which is amazing. Let's see what else we can get. 
Battle Pilgrims, Ward Save for Grail Knights and Grail Guardian units, and Embedded Paladins. Absolutely, we need that right now, in, in fact. Later, we'll want to improve our Chebuches. Blessings of the lady be upon Sir John is ready to go fight. The There's probably not much of a garrison left. Oh, yeah, they don't really have much left. So taking that is very easy. The Potion of Healing. Okay, that might go to Baron Thagen. Here's a Night Watch to watch for evil. Let's get a Tap Room. That is for Casualty Replenishment. Fantastic. I'll take that too. And Talk, I do not have. Oh, here's a Gem Mine Shaft at Sanctified Point. That we will take. And now, Baron, come on in. Okay, he's barely replenishing more, but that works out. Okay, Baron Thagen. Let's give you a few things down here. Point down there. Your Paladin is rank 7. We'll give him Foe Seeker. And it's about time for you to get some more Holy Warriors. There we are. When it comes to a Damsel, I could give you another Paladin. Wow. Noble Disdain Magic and Missile Resistance. That could be very good later on. 20% more hit points. Virtue of the Penitent. A great warrior. You know what? Honor and duty. We could use a tanky guy like him. Going straight in for anything that's really defensive. The longer he's able to last in battle, the better. He's got Guardian. Blessing of the Lady, of course. All right. You'll join that army. So, we now have our group together. Move closer. Emery has not moved yet. I doubt they will move. Not anytime soon. Let's have a look at Lord Philippe. Lord Philippe can go to Lamia. We've already fought a major battle fighting the High Queen, so taking it is not an issue. Ah, now that will be a challenge. It might be time for a siege. We haven't fought a siege in a very long time, but it might be time for one. I wonder. I need siege towers. Look at the veterancy on his army. My god, I did not realize how well trained they all were. He is by far the most elite army in the entire land. Absolutely incredible. So, we'll let him besiege Lamia. And I think that's pretty good. Now it's about time to look around. Let's go look at the Wood Elven camp. The Empire is just charging right in. They've taken some lumps, but you can see... Oh, no, the Wood Elves would be able to easily defend against that. The Bretonians are close by. They're not pushing out. There's more dwarves than everyone else around. If you look at the map as a whole, though. My god. The advantage is ours. Heavily ours. Even Kislev. Oh, wait, wait. Yeah, even Kislev, I had to be sure, is doing well. Krakadrak, doing well. The Bretonians have most of Norska. They're even conquering over here near the Dark Elven lands. I've never seen that in all my time playing this game. Champion of the lady. Look at our king. Look at our mighty king. He's like, yeah, that's right. You might be conquering the deserts, but I'm conquering the snowy plains of the north. <laughs> Very good. Their agents are very powerful. If anything, Henry is able to engage out here with all of those issues. Ah, I see. More control and more chivalry. Another Doom Tide. Ah, well. Those are not a problem for me. We don't even need this army anymore. You may go now. I don't know what commander I would recruit in the future. The Wood Elves are still defending. As they will. I wonder if more armies will come down to fight them. That would be amazing. All right, we have over here another army by Henry coming to fight. He'll probably retake that land, so we'll move up north. We've taken Kasabar. We're now safe down here. Baron Thagen can move on. We'll bring Baron Thagen. Hold on. That Paladin needs to come join, too. Come on, Aiden. He's a very powerful man. We'll give him a helmet. Oh, that helmet of discord will make a dramatic change in any battles to come. Here is your feather foe torque. You don't really have any magic, do you? Not really. Line of sight. Might as well just pop it in there. There's only so much that we can put on the other characters. Baron Thagen, you need that item and a potion of healing. Virtue of the ideal. Well, Baron, it's time for you to move now. You'll head over here to the Springs of Eternal Life to defend that point. And we'll upgrade whatever buildings that we can, which is many. 
as for what's happening over here. We just need one more pair of, of siege towers. I could have waited out with them all decay, but that would take a long time. We haven't done a siege in a very long time, so that's why we're doing it. Let's repair that building, build up these walls. Any walls that we have around here have got to be improved. That's all of my money. Karak Kadrin finally joined up with the overall Dwarven faction. Thorgrim now leads everything, and I'm okay with that. Let them do so. Now they have a continuous empire. I own some land. I've got a bit of land myself. I know what it's like to be a landowner. Okay, Baron Thagen. Let's move up. Sir John is on his way too. I wonder if he were to march. No, we'll let him replenish on the way there. If they take it, we'll just retake it. That's what we can do. Lord Louis will wait. There's probably a choke point where I could defend at, like right over here. But those armies might be a bit much, even for him, largely because of all the regiments of renown and constructs again, and all the chariots. My god, the chariots. They are plentiful. Death to the enemy. Level 30? Really, lady? You've got everything. But now it's time for a battle. Let's go. Lamia. A city where the queen would ingest that foul elixir made by Nagash. Where she would join the ranks of the unliving. She was an awful lady. She led her brethren down a dark, dark path. And now we have Lord Philippe and Caesar Maximilian fighting together on the vaunted walls of Lamia. Sure, they could fire their volleys. A goal for the trebuchet is to hit their massive constructs. They will fall easily to my trebuchet. Thankfully, the trebuchet deals an agonizing amount of damage to those constructs. Back here, we will later have to attack these Screaming Skull Catapults. Because of the Helm of Discord that Caesar Maximilian has and the buffs of our leader, there should be a great chance for us to deal damage to them without losing our Lord and our Paladin. And so they continue to fight on the wall. Ah, you grazed him. Tis but a flesh wound. And we can look over at my own formation. Archers will come join in the battle later. The trebuchet continues to strike. A few are stricken down by the towers, but none too many. Now these spearmen, they charge onto the walls. It's their turn. That was a devastating blow, but not as many as I thought would die, died in that attack. But they're moving now. It's time to get them into position. We shall capture the towers. One was destroyed by our trebuchet. Now, look at who's leaving. You heard the screams. Now the charges are here. It will take time to completely dislodge them from their trebuchets. Well, sorry, their catapults. Right, they're using the evil one. We use trebuchets. Trebuchet might is right. Caesar attacks one. Lord Philippe attacks the other. We return to the battle. And here we have a... Very large... Construct that's just waiting. That's going to be hit by our trebuchet. It takes only a bit of time. It took a bit for me to think of it. Now, we have our spearmen fighting on the walls. What I do that's very important, I use our damsel to not only debuff our foes, but to buff up this one singular group that's been caught in the middle, fighting all of these different enemies. It's like being perched, like a little bird watching the battle. See, look at that titan move being hit now it turns around it'll be hit more what you're seeing right now is all that's been happening in the battle I fought very hard for the walls there's no more shots coming from the screaming skull catapult a sigh of relief washes over the men even though they fight undead a few missed with that last salvos or salvo the tomb guard are here they're tough, but my spearmen are tougher, surprisingly. 
pretty soon this Titan will fall. We just wait for a few more Aaron shots. There may have been some friendly fire. At least a few of them landed down here. That was a large bird that just flew overhead. I thought it was one of my own, but it was not. Now let's move back. These two are on, or are on a dune of dead. Got a little bit tongue-tied there. I was so amazed by the propensity for violence that these two have. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. All right. Caesar Maximilian and Lord Philippe. Check out the visuals on this, though. Is that not amazing to even look at? Absolutely beautiful. It's hard to play any other game now because of the sheer variety you get in the Warhammer world. And they continue to hit them. Now let's go back. They continue to fight. The damsel, she should be up here by now. Ah, she is. She's right over here. And her job is to buff this one group. There we are. Another good hit. And so it falls. Yeah, that's right. Knock him down. I hope that was your king. Ha! It was. <laughs> we knocked them down. Your prince or king, doesn't matter. Your prince, you don't have an army stationed here. They're being killed by their regenerative magics. That horde is continuing to be buffed, and my, their enemies debuffed too. I mean, they're fighting Tomb Guard, an elite unit of the Tomb Kings. See now? They're stronger than they were. More melee attack and melee defense. And now we use our trebuchet to hit another Necro Sphinx. There's another one over here too. And over on the hill, there are few enemies left. Lord Philippe finishes off what remains. We have not fought a siege battle for a very long time, but their constructs actually work against them. Especially whenever I have our Hippogriff and Pegasus leaders. It's very nice. And eventually we'll own this entire city. That'll be good. So let's have a look back on the front lines. She continues to buff them. Right over here. You can see how we've begun to take other portions of the map. My archers are moving into position to further weaken the tomb guard who remain. These volleys will weaken them enough to where, even though we might not have destroyed as many as I would prefer, whenever they clash with another foe, they'll fall quickly. That buffer of health will be gone. I left these two here. He's using a Helm of Discord again to debuff them. And we stand your ground on Lord Philippe in order to buff our two units. And so, they've taken some damage. Not nearly enough damage, I'm sure. We go back to the front lines. Our poor archers are being forced to fight some Tomb Guard. But look at how many we were able to beat down. And these archers continue to operate at full capacity. That other Necro Sphinx, I don't believe it was fully brought down, was it? Oh, it was. That other Necro Sphinx was also brought low by our trebuchet. And they continue to use that one group of archers to try to, uh, to attack here, but the battle's been won by Lord Philippe. He says, no, I'm going to win today. I've made a choice. We want to move quickly we can double click oops there we go I can zoom in a little bit more there we are and now it's just a few tomb guard that remain on the wall it always takes a minute to get to them lord philippe is about to charge back into battle he's flying high above them for right now there's only ushabti and a necro sphinx left i'm not sure if they have any other infantrymen left Caesar Maximilian is close by. The men come a-charging in. That trebuchet is still offering support of fire. Now it's Lord Philippe and Caesar fighting together. Goodbye, Necro Sphinx. 
the battle's already won. There's only a few Shabti to bring down. The men came in just in time. Now they have a singular charge to perform. One more. Only one more men. That was a fairly intense battle. Lord Philippe, you did a great job. Now we own a new city. My god, there's a lot of slots here to build in. Plus 50 to chivalry, plus 4 to leadership, or size up to. Let's get all of our defenses as we often do. Let's get a pox shelter. I do enjoy my pox shelters, and let's see. They had me build a tailor, so we'll build a cellar. Campaign movement range in the local area. If I need to recruit more, I've got a pretty decent recruitment area. My strength and wisdom Lord Philippe is only level 23. It's hard to believe. I have a hard time believing it. I didn't even really focus on his combat capabilities, yet he's so very powerful. I made sure to focus on our units as much as I could. Now, that is a nice benefit to the charge bonus. We're going to give him that. If we could just get his alpha strike high enough to where he's able to demolish anyone, heck yes. Here we go, Sir Caesar. Now you're stronger than you were. Here's a talisman for you. A potion of full hardiness sounds about right for you, my friend. Okay, we should call it here. When we're back, we shall attack Henry and potentially take out what's over here. There's only a little bit left to do. Thank you for watching. Leave a like down below if you would like to see more tomorrow. And Skeggy will probably be the next campaign that we play. We'll be playing a campaign themed around fleeing from chaos, but also making our new home in a new world where clearly... We do not mesh with the other cultures and people who are there. So it's going to be pretty uh, violent, I think. But that will get us over to the new world. I'm not sure what campaign I'll use yet. Because really, I don't know if I should be using the Mortal Empires campaign or the Vortex. I mean, it's not likely that we would move beyond the new world. So that's why I'm not sure if we would go beyond that. But we shall see. Anyway, until then.